So hi and welcome back to the channel. So those very nice people at El Terrastro have kindly sent me some more equipment to play with. So what I have here in this big box, I'll show you in a second, it is their Starwave Ascent 130 triplet. Now that's going to give my Esprit 120 a run for us money. Uh, I've owned the Esprit for around two and a half years now, so I'm quite familiar with that. And it'll be good to see the difference between this 130 triplet and my 120 triplet outside in the observatory. So I plan to use both of these scopes out in the observatory and basically see uh, how they compare with each other. So hopefully that'll be interesting and I better get this rig set up. So let's get this scope out of the box and have a proper look at it. Wow, look at that. And that's where the D-Shield retracted. Very nice. This is gonna be at least the same size as the Esprit 120 in the observatory. So now I've gotta build it up, set it on the uh, Losmani plates and uh, put all the other bits and pieces with it. Right, so here we have basic scope set up. I've got a Mealy Quarter 3 mini PC and a Pegasus power box that I should put under here. So we've got the 60mm Altair guide scope on the top. And this is the little Altair, uh, the Mini GP130 guide camera. Right, so I'm gonna put the flattener on here. I wanna keep the scope at its native focal length, which is 910 mil. I've got the reducer as well, but I'm not gonna reduce it at the moment. Just gonna get this flattener on. And I think for comparison, I will pair this scope with the 2600 MC Pro and the filter wheel that I've got already set up in the observatory. And uh, I'll just swap the camera over from the Esprit onto this scope. And I will photograph the same target for the same length of time using the same filters. That way I'll get a much better comparison between the two scopes. All right, so let's get all these cables disconnected. <music> Right, so let's get this scope out in the observatory and then we're just gonna wait for a clear sky. Okay, so with hindsight, which is a wonderful thing, um, it's probably better that I don't have a cage like I've built up here. I'm gonna have to try and mount merely quite a three and the Pegasus power box on the top here somewhere because with this cage he's raised the whole scope up way too high and the top of the scope here is going to actually hit the roof of the observatory which means I won't be able to open and close the roof without setting the um, scope to a part position which I haven't set that up with the spree mainly because it clears the uh, scope nicely, the roof does, and I, I don't have to actually worry about a park position. Um, which is good in the event of an emergency, like it starts raining and I have to quickly shut the roof, I just press a button and the roof closes, and then I don't have to worry about it. So, I'm going to take this cage off and just have one Los Mandy on the bottom and try and mount the Mealy Quarter 3 and the Pegasus Bar Box on the top here. That way it will keep the height of the scope down and hopefully the roof will clear without actually a collision, which we definitely don't want. Right, 
right, so this is take two. Now I've swapped the, those many plates over. Hopefully this will fit. Right, so get these little spaces on. Put the camera and the filter wheel on. Right, so the imaging train is all set up. Now we're just gonna get all the cables on and get it connected to Nina and wait for a clear sky. So we're all connected. This actually looks very much similar to my Esprit 120, but it is just a teeny little bit bigger. Then all the wires are connected and I've tested it with Nina, everything works. So we've just got to wait for a clear sky and then we can test this rig out. So finally, after about a week since I set this rig up, we've got a clear sky tonight. So I've got to do a manual focus and uh, then choose a target. So first thing to do is open the roof, uh, connect to Nina and uh, get this rig going. an SHO on the Pac-Man, so that is NGC281. Esprit 120 on the mount now and I've taken off the Altair 130 so I had to manually focus the uh, Altair between the filters I did SHO and I had to focus between each filter because I don't have an EAF on that 130 scope so it's going to be nice to get back to the Esprit and have it all done automatically for me so I've just got to wait for the next lot of clear sky so I can get the Esprit 120 working on the same target and uh, I'll be able to compare the data. So last night I had a slight issue here in the observatory. The PC decided to reset itself and of course uh, threw everything out on Nina. And um, the mount was still tracking. Uh, it's due to do a Meridian flip at 222. Only um, it didn't do the flip. So uh, at about seven o'clock in the morning I discovered the camera tight against the pier. And it had been pushing against the pier for around five hours. So. I have no idea if it's done any damage to it. Uh, I've got a clear sky tonight, so I'm gonna set the rig going again tonight and see what's happened to it, see if there's anything wrong with it. I've got no idea. I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. So I'm now gonna get that going and have a look, check out, see if there's been any damage done to it or not. So quick check in Nina at all the stars in the corners. Doesn't appear to be anything wrong with them, so I would guess there's no damage, so hopefully we're good to go. Right, so as you can see, lots of cloud coming in. 98% moon, and lots of cloud. So I think I'm actually going to close the roof now and stop this sequence going. I think this session is going to end a little early. So I'm pleased to report that it was clear last night and I managed to get the rig working. 
everything worked fine. I've looked at the data and there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the scope at all, nothing wrong with the camera. So I think I got away with that lightly. That was my first peer collision and hopefully my last. Um, but yeah, I got away with it, so it's all good. So I've now got the data from the Esprit and I've got the data from the Altair 130. So I'm gonna move on to the PC now and we'll have a look at that data. Okay, so I've stacked all the data in APP and I've brought them into Pixinsight. So we've got an SHO from the Altair 130 and an SHO from the Spree 120. So let's have a look at that data. Firstly, we'll choose an HA. So this is an HA from the Altair. This is an HA from the Spree. So the imaging session was exactly the same length. It was three hours from each scope. Uh, an SHO, that's one hour on each filter. And this is one hour of HA stacked in APP. So clearly there is a difference in brightness. Now both scopes were F7. And these were imaged about, I think, two nights apart. But I do know that the conditions were the same. The seam was very good and the temperature was about the same. So um, clearly there's a difference here with the HA from the Altair. It looks a lot brighter. So let's go and look at some detail here. This is a close up. The Altair is on the left and the Esprit is on the right. Again, you can see it's a little brighter. And look in here at this detail from the Altair. A lot more detail in there than what there is in here. And this is exactly the same. This is one hour of HA from each of the scopes. Clearly a difference there. All right, so let's um, close those. And we'll just look at the stars in the corners. We go to the Altair first. Right, this is top right, then we'll look at the spree. And these have not been cropped. Bottom right, stars look very good. I mean, these are perfectly round stars. Well, let me uh, create a colour image from this data and I'll put that on screen and we'll have a look at the difference. So there's one thing I'll tell you about this scope right quick. When I first got it, the tension control knob underneath wasn't done up very tight. And this little um, nut here for the um, rotator, that wasn't done up tight. And there was a little bit of movement. In fact, there's a bit of movement there now. I don't know whether you can hear that or see that. But as soon as you tighten up this nut here and if you get the um, focus tensioner just right, you don't want to get it too tight or you won't be able to focus it. But if you just get it tight enough, it's completely gone. You can see, look, there's no noise, there's no movement. It's nicely solid. So, so do make sure that this little nut here is tight and also the focus tensioner is set to the right tension. That will take out any movement at all here in this um, focus draw tube here. Okay, so this scope here has surprised me. Um, I've got to say that it's equal to the Spree 120 in terms of quality, um, even build quality as well. It's very nicely finished. Um, it's, uh, this douche shield is so solid, unlike my wobbly Spree 120 douche shield, which you have to tape it up to stop it from wobbling around. This is nicely built. Uh, it's got a rotator on the end here where you can just rotate it like this. And it's got a very nice quality to it. And the rag and pinion focuser is very smooth. So I obviously focused this manually because I didn't have an electronic focuser fitted. And it's very easy to do. Uh, right, so the quality of this scope. It's uh, 130 aperture. It's 910 focal length. 
is f7. When reduced, it's down to 724 f5.6. So its technical term is airspace ED lanthanum fully multi-coated on all six optical surfaces. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but it clearly does a very good job. Um, it's not FPL 53, or at least it doesn't say so on the end there like my Esprit 120 does, but I really don't think that matters. Um, I'm very impressed with this scope. So in comparison to my Esprit 120, I can honestly say that this scope easily compares to my Esprit and it produces lovely images and it's a thousand pound less money. The Skywatcher is selling for around 2,600 pounds, just over actually. This scope here is £1,600. I mean, it's a no-brainer to me. If I was buying a scope with this focal length again, I would definitely go for the Ultra Astro. The build quality is excellent and um, everything about it is just great. And I really don't think that there's any difference in quality. And I've got to say thanks to Ultra Astro for letting me get my hands on it. It's been great fun. So yeah, I can highly recommend this scope. If you're in the market for a scope like this, then then definitely check out El Terrestro and see what they've got to offer. So I really hope you liked the video and maybe even found it useful. So a big thanks to all of my subscribers and if you're not subscribed yet and you like this kind of thing, then please consider hitting that subscribe button, that would be much appreciated. And uh, give the video a thumbs up and a like, it really does help the channel. And I've also enabled the super thanks button if you'd like to support the channel. And I've now also enabled the channel membership. So. If you'd like to become a channel member, then please click down below and uh, yeah, c come and join us. That'd be great. I'd be much appreciated. So um, thanks very much for watching. And uh, as always, I wish you all clear skies.